My name's Amy Harmon and I'm principal bassoon of the Philharmonia Orchestra. The bassoon is a woodwind instrument and you play it by using double reeds, which are so cool because it's two pieces of bamboo tied together and when you blow it vibrates. You then attach it onto this metal pipe, which is called a crook, and the air goes in all the way down and up again. It's got a series of holes which are open and closed by pressing keys which change the pitch. It's got a very large range and you can play very low. And then also very high. And then everything in between. I make my reeds myself out of bamboo cane that you buy from France and you can make a lot of them and have absolutely none that work, which is probably the worst part of being a bassoonist because it completely depends on the piece of wood. Um, and when you have a good one, it's a very good day. <laughs> you control the reed with a combination of the muscles around your mouth and with air that you blow from your diaphragm. Um, and also you put your tongue against it to make an articulation. So if you hit your tongue against it quite hard, you get quite a loud attack, or you can do a softer one. You can, if you have to play very fast, you can do something called double tonguing, which is where you make a D noise and then a G noise within your mouth, like da -ga -da -ga -da -ga -da -ga -da, and you do that against the reed and it sounds like this. The bassoon is quite often in unison with the clarinet, which is really nice. I think there's a really nice blend of colours when you play with the clarinet. And also quite often you'll be um, the bottom of the chord if all the woodwinds are playing and with the flute being at the top. I sit on the back row of the woodwind section to the left of the clarinet and I have the oboe in front of me, which can sometimes be quite difficult, especially because the principal oboe of the Philharmonia is six foot three. So, um, yeah, sometimes you don't get to see too much. <laughs> All the principals sit together in the middle and then we each have a second and sometimes a third person sitting to our left or right. If all the bassoon section are playing together, it's easiest to lead everyone in by breathing together. And with a really good bassoon section, when you get that right, it's, it's easy. I move quite a lot when I play, which I didn't realise until I saw myself on camera and got quite a shock. Um, but I remember when I watched orchestras when I was younger, I always thought that it must be helpful to have a little bit of movement at the start of a note. And it's also helpful with the other members of the woodwind section. Like if you're playing with the clarinet, when you move slightly together, it's easier to get the note starting together. A lot of the colours that you get out of playing the bassoon is with the air. With a faster airflow or a, so, a slower airflow or a lot of air at one time and then less and with that you can control vibrato and dynamics and just the character of the instrument really. People can do vibrato in different ways but um, I like to do it with my airflow which is controlled by your diaphragm at the bottom of your stomach and so you sort of push and release quickly to make the airflow change. A note without vibrato would sound like this. And with. And it's really nice to use um, when you're trying to play expressively or dramatically. It's nice to add it and then take it away. You can also play very lyrically on the bassoon. It has a register called the tenor register where a lot of really nice tunes are written and you can play nicely legato and it has quite a singing sound. You need to have very good lung capacity and very good control over your breathing. There's all sorts of exercises that you can do to help that and you always need to empty your lungs and completely refill them before you start playing. It's difficult when you're nervous because you still have to fill your lungs and be able to breathe as if you're relaxed. When you've got 
a long phrase, you have to work out where you're breathing in advance and take in as much air as you need um, for that amount of notes. And sometimes it's quite difficult when you're playing in unison with a clarinet who has a completely different way of breathing and way of putting air into their instrument. And you have to plan a place that suits you both. And sometimes that takes quite a lot of time to work out. You mark a little um, upside down triangle where you're going to breathe. Early bassoon parts quite often were doubling the cellos or the double basses to play the bass lines, and you very rarely got a good tune. But as time's gone on, more composers have given it a much more leading role. Um, for example, Stravinsky starting the Rite of Spring with that very high solo, or Mozart using the bassoon in a lot of arias in his operas. Haydn mainly used the bassoon to double the cellos and the basses in playing the bass line under the tunes. Um, and quite often you'll have a lot of repeated notes that you need to make some sense out of. <laughs> Beethoven is probably one of my favorite composers um, for bassoon writing. He writes so beautifully and he can put you in any section of the orchestra, you could be playing with the horns and then the cellos and then have a really nice tune on all your own. And it's such fun to play. It's quite exhausting, but it's very fun. Berlioz writes really fantastic bassoon parts and one of his favorite things to do is have a lot of bassoons playing in unison, which hadn't really been done before that time. Um, there's a particularly good bit in the March to the Scaffold in the Symphony Fantastique where there's four of us all playing the same tune, which starts a bit like this. <laughs> Stravinsky uses the bassoon in a lot of different ways. He writes you some amazing tunes, but also um, there's a lot more rhythmic sections where you'd be playing with the brass or the percussion, um, like in the Infernal Dance in The Firebird, where you start the dance playing with the brass players. <laughs> The change with more modern bassoon writing is it goes a lot higher, which is sometimes not appreciated. Um, and there's a lot, it's a lot more virtuosic. In Strauss, he writes all sorts of huge arpeggios and things that would have been too difficult to do on the older instruments. The bassoon, it's, it's quite a niche market and um, there's one place in Germany that has about six bassoon factories and they all come from the same forest, the wood that they're made from. And they're quite expensive and they have a ridiculously long waiting list. The, where the factory where my bassoon is from, you now have to wait, I think, six and a half years to get a new one. It seems quite heavy, so you need some help in holding it up. Um, I personally like to use a strap that I sit on and then hook onto the bottom, which is called a seat strap. You can also have slings that go around your neck and some around your back to help you hold it. Uh, bassoons are made of maple, usually, and then covered in silver keys, well, it's silver or nickel plated, and the crook can be all sorts of things. You can have silver or platinum or even solid gold, depending on your bank balance. <laughs> if you've enjoyed learning about the instruments in the orchestra, why not try our iPad app, The Orchestra, featuring Esa Pekka Salonen and the Philharmonia Orchestra. Fully interactive video playback lets you view the orchestra from all angles, and the revolutionary beat map shows you who is playing when. Follow along with synchronized scores, hear the inside scoop in audio commentaries, and get a 360-degree view of all the instruments. 
available for download in the App Store on iTunes.